All right, folks, so today we've got another quick how-to video, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to install the emulators on the EverDrive GBA Mini X5. So the first thing we're going to need to do is head online and grab the emulators that you need. Now, the EverDrive actually supports a number of different emulators, so you can have the Master System, the Game Gear, the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color, and the Neo Geo Pocket. So we're going to walk through the process of each one of those today. So let's head online and grab what we need. So first we're going to grab the Master System and Game Gear emulator. And this one's coming from Zofar's domain. I'm sure I mispronounced that. But all we need to do is click download by the binary version. And that's right here. Next, staying on Zofar's domain, we're going to grab the Neo Geo Pocket emulator. And again, just click the download button right here. And then finally on Zofar's domain, we're going to grab the NES emulator. And again, just click the download button right here. Then we're going to head over and grab the original Game Boy emulator. Now this one's coming from Goomba. So all you need to do here is click Goomba version 2.0 right here. And then finally, we're going to head over to Dweedit's website just to download the Game Boy Color emulator. So all you need to do is click the download button right here. All right, so once all your downloads are done, head over to wherever your downloads go. Mine end up in my download folder. And you should see five zip folders. So what we're going to do is just open each one up. So this first one is Goomba. And you'll see Goomba.gba. And we're going to want to extract that over to your desktop. Then once it's on your desktop, just click twice so you can rename the file. And this one's going to be renamed GB, just for the original Game Boy. We're going to repeat the process going through each one. There should be a .gba file in each of the zip folders. So just extract each one of those to the desktop and you'll want to rename each one for the system that the emulator is for. So the one for Pocket NES just gets renamed NES.gba. The file in NGP Advance gets renamed NGP.gba. Now for the file that's in the SMS Advance zip folder, we're actually going to need to make a copy of this. So what we'll do, we'll extract it to our desktop. Right click on it, hit copy, then right click on your desktop, click paste, and we have a copy of the SMS Advance.gba file. One of these is going to get renamed SMS.gba, and the other is going to be renamed gg.gba. And that'll give you your emulators for the Master System and Game Gear. Okay, so finally we're going to extract the file which is in the Goomba Color zip folder. And that one just gets renamed gbc, because the original Game Boy and Game Boy Color have two different emulators. All right, so now we've got all the emulators extracted and renamed correctly on our desktop. What we're going to do is head into the SD card, which is normally in your EverDrive. We're going to click on the GBA Sys folder. And then within that folder, there is a folder named MU. So just open that. And then we're going to take all of the emulator files that we just created, select those, and drag them into that folder. Okay, perfect. So now you've got your emulators copied over, we're going to go back to the root of the SD card, and we're going to create some folders where you can put your games. Now creating folders for each of the systems isn't required, I just like to do it to keep everything a little bit tidier, it's easier to find when I'm trying to navigate through my games list. But all you'll need to do if you want to do this, is right click, select new, folder, and then just name it as you want. I'm just going to match the console abbreviations just for ease of use. So once you've created all of your folders, one for each system. All you need to do is drop your games into each of the corresponding folders. So I have one ROM from each of the systems. I'm just going to copy those into the relevant folder. Nice and easy. And once your games are done copying over, we're actually done on the computer, so you can close this out. Take the SD card, drop it back into your EverDrive, and drop it back into your system. 
Now for today's video, I'm actually gonna be doing this on the Game Boy Player, just so I could capture some footage and show you guys how all this works. So I'm gonna head over to the GameCube. All right, so here we are on the GameCube, and like I say, I'm using the Game Boy Player for this, hence the black border here. And what you're looking at now is the EverDrive's main screen. So as you can see, we've got the folders that we just created, and they'll contain all our games. So I figure what we do real quick is just head into each of the different emulators, just so you guys can see how it works. So all you need to do is hit A to select the folder that you want. And then you'll see a list of the games that you have on your SD card. So in this case, I have Xenon 2. If you've not played this, it's a fantastic game from the Bitmap Brothers. Then once again, hit A and A again to start the game. And then obviously again, you get the standard Game Boy Advance splash screen and then we're into the game. So just playing through here, this feels exactly as I expected it to. I did have the Game Boy version of Xenon 2 many years ago, and it's exactly as I remember it. So we'll just let that play for a couple of seconds so you can see how it looks and sounds. All right, so that's Xenon 2. So the original Game Boy emulator works pretty well. Quite happy with that. We'll reset real quick and take a look at the Game Boy Color emulator. Again, it's just the same process. Click A to open the folder. A once again to select the game. You'll see the Game Boy Advance splash screen and then we're into the game. So for the Game Boy Color, I chose the game Driver, which is incredibly similar to the original Grand Theft Auto. Although they seem to have a lot more obstacles that you can run into, which makes it a little bit more difficult. But the game overall, again, plays great, so no real complaints with the emulator for the Game Boy Color. And again, I'll just let this play for a couple of seconds so you guys can see what the gameplay looks like and how it sounds. Okay, so the Game Boy Color emulator looks good. Now on to the Game Gear emulator. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at Sonic Drift. And again, another game that I've not played for a long time. So let's see how this looks. So again, this looks exactly as I remember it when I used to play it on the Game Gear. The graphics and sound look great. No issues. Controls good. Uh, so I would say that the uh, emulator for the Game Gear is also solid. And I'll just let you take a look at this playing for a couple of seconds. Alright, so I'm happy with the Game Gear emulator, that's good. So next we'll give the NES emulator a run. And for this game, we're going to be taking a look at Mighty Bomb Jack, which is totally different from the Spectrum version that I used to play as a kid. So I'm not familiar with this one at all. And as you can see, I'm doing a great job of dying. But the game just seems to be running pretty smoothly and sounds pretty good. So again, as far as the emulator goes, no complaints. Alright, now I feel like I've died enough on this, so let's move on to the next. And we're going to be taking a look at Samurai Showdown on the Neo Geo Pocket emulator. Now, one thing to note, this doesn't work with the Neo Geo Pocket Color games. This is just for the original Neo Geo Pocket. So just a handful of games for that one. All right, so straight off the bat, this feels super, super sluggish. Obviously, you can see that it's taken an age for everything to run. Graphics are running slow. The sound is running slow. And you can't see it, obviously, but uh, the button inputs are way behind what I'm doing. So straight off the bat, the Neo Geo Pocket emulator isn't brilliant, to be honest. I mean, it works, but it's running way slow. So let's get into the gameplay real quick and see how that is. I'm hoping it's a little bit better than the intro sequence and the menus. And it's not. This is borderline unplayable, so I'm going to have to play with this and see if there's any other settings that we can get to get this to run better. But um, yeah, not great. So I think I'm done with the Neo Geo Pocket emulator. 
not a fantastic experience there. Maybe I'll try a couple different games and see if that's any different. So finally, let's check out the last of the emulators that we got today. This is the Sega Master System, and we're going to be taking a look at the original Streets of Rage here. And to be honest, this should play just as well as the Game Gear emulator, since they are exactly the same, and uh, Game Gear and Master System games are essentially exactly the same as well. So let's boot this up and see what happens. So straight off the bat, this looks great. Obviously sounds great. It's Streets of Rage. It's gonna sound great. It has a great soundtrack. Looks good. And it's playing exactly as I would expect it to. So I would say that the Master System emulator is good. All right, so that's the process of setting up emulators for your EverDrive GBA X5. I think you'll agree that the process is fairly straightforward, it's not too complicated. I was a little bit disappointed that the Neo Geo Pocket emulator didn't work quite as well as I'd hoped, but with all the other emulators, no complaints. I hope you found the video helpful. If you have, please drop us a like and also consider subscribing. It's really helping the channel grow. And also, don't forget to check us out on Twitter. Thanks for watching.